welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel in the first place. Today we have a multiple character video and it's period comfort. Um, it's gender neutral, so let's go ahead and get into it. Izuki Midoriya. Today, since there were no UA classes, you were at home and in bed. You didn't plan on doing anything besides relaxing, watching television, and gorging on all types of snacks. However, Izuku was coming over to join you, but he was with his mother at the supermarket. Although, it wasn't a normal trip for him as much as it was for his mother. Izuku was blushing deeply out of embarrassment, and he was nervous and shaking a bit too. When his mother turned around to speak to him, she saw her son walking from the aisle of period products. As a listener's lover and a hero, they asked me to get some, uh, things, he mumbled. It was that time of the month for you, and unfortunately, you ran out of products at the end of last month. Izuku's mother hummed and followed her son down the aisle. Well, what do they use? Uh, tampons, pads, or whatever those things are? She sighed when picking up a box. Any specific brand? Before all those questions slipped from his mother's mouth, Izuku began calling you and trying to understand all that you were saying. Uh, here, talk to my mom. He laughed awkwardly. Shoto Todoroki. What the hell is wrong with your partner? Katsuki mumbled. Yeah, I know Bakugo has temper problems, Kirishima mumbled. They're going to tear down the school. Control them, Tenya shouted. Today wasn't your day. And your quirk definitely showed that. The skies were dark gray, and the wind was blowing strongly. The thunder echoed for miles. Even though the storm was only above UA, everyone was still frightened for all of the students. I'll go talk to them, showed aside. Thankfully, all the students were indoors, for it was lunchtime. You weren't in the cafeteria yet, so Shoto went off to go and find you. Has anyone seen listener? Shoto asked. There was a group of girls, Momo, Mina, and Sue, in front of the bathroom, and they were digging through their bags. Yeah, she's in there. Don't worry, we got it under control. Though one day I don't bring anything. After Mina pulled out something wrapped in a pink cloth, Shoto watched her rush into the bathroom. Once the girls left, he waited outside the bathroom for you. You sighed in relief and cleaned yourself up. When you stepped out, Shoto pulled you into a tight hug. Hey, it's okay, he whispered. As you hugged him back, he watched the storm outside dissipate into a sunny day. Tamaki Amajiki As you were still asleep in bed, Tamaki was filling up the bathtub in your dorm. He constantly kept adjusting the water to make sure it wasn't too hot or cold. He even added bubbles and lit a few scented candles. Okay, um, he whispered. Tamaki and you were napping together once the two of you arrived at your place after attending UA. Halfway through the nap, Tamaki woke up to hearing you whine and fidgeting in your sleep. As he rolled over to pull you closer, he noticed the red stain on the sheets and on your pajamas. For a moment, Tamaki didn't panic, but he calmed himself down and decided to take care of you instead of you having to do it. Listener, he whispered. Uh... Here, let's get you in the bath, you're bleeding. After Tamaki told you that, you immediately felt yourself become embarrassed. You were even tearing up. But you were tearing up because of the flattery to the soothing bath he prepared for you. I'll take care of the bed. You enjoy the bath. Tamaki gave you a quick kiss on the forehead before taking the sheets off your bed. As you soaked in the bath, he dug around your closet to grab you a change of clothes. Mirio. After you weren't answering some of Mirio's texts or calls, he went over to your dorm to check on you. When you weren't answering the knocks at the door, he used his quirk and let himself inside. He walked through the walls until he entered your bedroom. Sunshine, he whispered. Again, you weren't there. You were in the bathroom and you were holding onto your gut and whining. Sunshine, are you okay in there? At first, you were unsure why Mirio was here, but now you're relieved. Mirio, thank gosh you're here. Can you do me a really big favor? Mirio was concerned, but he agreed without hesitation. After you explained it to him that you were on your monthly and struggling to overcome the cramping pains, you asked him to go to the market to pick you up some medicine that would help. 
You then asked him to buy some pads or tampons, and you showed him the last one that you had, so that way he knew which one to buy. Oh, there's so many boxes, Nurio whispered to himself. He was at the market and in the period product aisle. These don't have pictures. No, I can't call them and ask. They need my help, and I'll be their hero, <laughs> Muriel grinned. After he noticed someone grabbing a box, he stopped them. Um, excuse me, are those a good brand? He asked awkwardly. Tomura Shigaraki. Tomura glared at you when you swatted his hand away as if it were a fly trying to land on your shoulder. I said don't touch me, you mumbled. Believe it or not, this attitude of yours surprised and aggravated Tomura. The reason why is because he didn't know how this mood of yours stirred up to begin with. It was that time of the month for you, and after the pains of cramping stopped, you became a bit more short-tempered when dealing with others. Tomura was frustrating you most of the day because he was trying to touch on you and hold you to him. Since it was during the daylight hours, Tomura sheltered indoors with you at your house. You didn't expect his arrival, especially when he showed up this morning while you were still in bed. And I said I could do what I please, Tomura said strictly. When he stood up from the couch, you were immediately tugged into his lap. However, you teleported to your bedroom shortly before he could wrap his arms around your sides. If you don't get out of that room, I'll make- when you appeared beside him and sat back on the couch, you sighed and rested your forehead on his shoulder. I'm on my period, you whispered. Just stroke my hair and be nice. Without saying anything, Tomura slightly smirked and used his fingertips to gently scratch at your head. And that made you smile and relax. Dobby, unfortunately, you started your monthly cycle last night. The cramps were terrible, and you didn't expect so much in a short amount of time. Thankfully, you had the products you needed. As the next day went on, you didn't feel like doing anything. The pain in your sides and gut caused you to remain in bed all day and do nothing but sleep. With that being said, Dobby showed up at your apartment after you weren't answering his calls. He knew you didn't have any villainous plans because you would have told him beforehand. Once he snuck into your apartment, he walked around and searched the room. He found you, but you were curled up in bed and groaning. Surprisingly, Dobby knew what that meant. When you felt the bed sink in, your eyes popped open immediately, but then they softened when you looked back at Dobby. What are you doing here? Don't worry about that. He mumbled while he started to massage your lower back and your sides. You felt yourself relax into him. Tell me what you're doing this for, you hummed. Dolly pulled you close in a spooning position, but then groaned faintly. Not that I'm scared of you, but I'd rather be on your good side, he chuckled. Alright, so that's the end of this one. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing, you know? <laughs> Sorry, I know it's weird to ask. Anyways, music link, fanfic link, discord link, and thumbnail art link will all be in the description. Go ahead and check those out. I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, whatever, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye!